Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Executive Vice President Development for Oracle Cloud, Amit Zaveri. Good morning, guys. Welcome to Open Vault. We have an exciting session for you guys planned today. We're going to show, uh, talk about the product roadmap and strategy for the cloud platform. We have quite a few demos as well to showcase some of the new technologies we've been building over the last 12 months. We also have a customer to show, talk about their use case and their journey to the cloud using the cloud platform as well. So let's get started. Let me get this going. Well, we'll start. All right. All right. So uh, we, we started investing in a cloud platform around six to seven years ago. And we're proud to say that we have a very comprehensive portfolio uh, of integrated and open PaaS services uh, today. It allows customers to develop and deploy applications, uh, be able to integrate and extend them very easily, be able to publish content and engage users, analyze the data, and be able to predict actions associated with that, and then be able to secure and manage all the different systems uh, you might have in your environment. Uh, our philosophy from the beginning has, has been around making sure we have a comprehensive set of services. We have around 30 plus different services today, covering everything from data management, app development, uh, integration, both data as well as applications, uh, things around analytics and big data, content and experience, uh, identity and security, and system management. So it's pretty comprehensive in that regards. It's based on all open standards, and I'll talk about what are the things we do from the open source perspective as well as open standards later. It's integrated, so it has all common tools, common underlying architecture, as well as uh, uh, common security models. So as if you start using one or two of the services, it becomes very easy to keep on adding more and more without having to learn and understand different ways of interacting with it. Uh, it's hybrid, so you can run this in a public cloud today as well as deploy this behind your firewall or a partner's uh, data center if you choose to for any kind of data residency, privacy, compliance, a governance issue you might have. So we'll let you run it wherever you want to. As well as it has AI built in, so it keeps on learning and improving based on things we see from the usage perspective as well. It's all built on top of our Oracle Cloud infrastructure, very scalable and highly performant. Beyond the core services, we've been also investing aggressively in a lot of new areas uh, based on the things we see from our users and uh, technologies which are evolving in the industry as well. So we have full-blown uh, AI and data science platform. Uh, I'll show you some of those examples as well later. Uh, blockchain service uh, based on Hyperledger Fabric, uh, as well as digital assistant for doing the next generation user experience, adding on top of your application you might be building as well as VR and AR-based application development tools, so you can embed and allow those applications to have a lot of the new technologies as well. So I talked about openness, and I think this is a core area of the way we've been building our services as well. I think we don't probably get enough kudos for the amount of work we do from the open technology as well as open source-based investment. But in general, if you look at broadly, uh, choice of technology stack, right? So programming languages, we support pretty much every programming language you can think of. Uh, uh, and whatever we speak to our developers and uh, uh, programmers, whatever they want, we make sure we provide that as part of a platform. So Java, of course, Ruby, Python, PHP, Go, all supported as part of the basic platform. Uh, databases, of course, Oracle Database, MySQL, but we also have work going on with Cassandra, Mongo, and adding a lot of other uh, database systems running on our stack as well. Uh, different tools, different frameworks. Similarly, using open source as well. Uh, if you look at uh, what we're doing from app dev perspective, we have a Docker as a service, we have Kubernetes as a service. We're providing things around Hadoop, Spark, uh, Kafka as services as well. Uh, similarly, on blockchain, it's, uh, we are using Hyperledger Fabric from Linux Foundation as the core underlying uh, technology for building a blockchain service. Uh, and then if you look at AI deep, deep learning area, TensorFlow, CAFE, DL4J, so we're adding a lot of open source technologies into our stack. The way we look at it uh, differently from other vendors is really that making sure we take the, the open source Apache-based solutions or whatever is out there in the industry as a standard and not fork it and uh, change it. So if you build anything on our services, you can e easily go and deliver it or deploy this anywhere else you choose, wherever the core uh, open source technologies are running. So that makes you at least much more uh, easy to transport your workload and not get locked in. Uh, on top of other technologies, we of course make sure that our services are all heterogeneous, working with the other application vendors like Salesforce.com, Microsoft, for connecti connectivity pers perspective. 
as well as uh, uh, support for different channels. So we'll show you some of the examples we're doing with chatbots and digital assistants, but support for Alexa and Siri, of course, but also different things like Slack, uh, Facebook Messenger, uh, as part of the way to interface into our applications. And then we continue uh, contributing to open source as well. We, of course, have been doing a lot of work in Java, but beyond that, in the whole big data ecosystem and other areas, we have a lot of contributors uh, from Oracle providing a lot of innovations we work on into the open source community. So again, a lot of work going on in the background to make sure our technologies and our services remain open and that investment continues. So pretty proud where we are today. Uh, we have 18,000 plus customers using a cloud platform. Uh, with around 3,500 different apps in Oracle Cloud Marketplace. And the key thing is that we, we're getting very good validation from third-party analyst firms like Gartner and Forrester. We are leaders in 16 different pass categories today, uh, and it keeps on growing. And if you look at where we were four or five years ago, this has come a long way, and it's a very uh, uh, encouraging for all, all the engineers and the product teams to see this, this kind of uh, adoption as well as uh, uh, feedback from the community as well. So now let's get into the details. When we talk to a lot of our customers, usually they start with a use case. They start with the idea that they want to be able to analyze data they have in their applications, bring in different data sources as well, and be able to predict actions. The challenges they face today, uh, if you look at the uh, main key area for them is that the data is very, uh, very siloed. Uh, information, the tools out there today are not really up to par in terms of being able to take things from structured and unstructured data. Uh, be able to provide governance and transparency and then provide the security model to access the data to create the right kind of reports. Uh, the tools are very fragmented uh, and then it doesn't have a lot of depth in terms of taking enterprise data and understanding the context and the lineage and all the associated information acro across different data uh, silos as well. Uh, and it's very labor intensive. You, uh, to create analysis and get insights, there's a lot of work to be done uh, usually and it's very error prone as well. Uh, to make it a little easier, what we've been doing is we've been investing in creating out uh, our analytics and big data platform at Oracle. Uh, it's a single integrated end-to-end -end solution with capabilities across the board in terms of uh, be able to do visual interface for doing things around data preparation, uh, self-service analysis, as well as enterprise analytics. Uh, we also, of course, run on top of any kind of data march, so data warehouse and data lake. So to take structured and unstructured data and be able to do analysis very quickly. Uh, we embedded machine learning into our stack as well uh, so that you can enhance uh, your uh, analysis as well as make sure the discovery can happen very quickly uh, as well. And then it adapts to the user behavior uh, and activities so that you can, again, have a much better understanding of what your business is doing and how to use that information to run that effectively as well. To, uh, to make this all real, what we've done is we created a demo scenario which we'll use throughout this session. Uh, using a company, a fictitious company called Rare Beauty, where they're trying to do a retail expansion in Bay Area. They want to hire new employees uh, and want to find the best candidates and onboard them uh, very quickly. Very common example, many, many companies go through this. Uh, so we have pieces to our demo where we are showing, showcase to you how easy it is to say, for example, hiring manager to find candidates, how they would go about doing that. So for that, let me invite jocks from our uh, uh, analytics product team to show you what capabilities we have for doing this kind of analysis and what tools we provide. Jax, come on in. Hi, Jax, welcome. Thank you. Show us some of these capabilities then. Thank you very All much. Right. All right, so what I wanted to show you today is how the Oracle platform can integrate with, but really more importantly, extend the tools that we know and love. And to do that, I'm gonna pick up a conversation in Slack between Greg and Roshana. Greg's an analyst who's been tasked with predicting hotspots around the Bay Area where to open new stores. And um, so he reaches out to Roshana for help because he'd like to overlay his analysis with uh, information about nearby skilled resources, which is important when opening a store. So he reaches out for, to Roshana for help to see if she's seen the analysis so far. And of course she hasn't, but that's not really a problem because in line with the Slack conversation, Greg can invoke the Oracle Digital Assistant and ask it to bring in the latest analysis um, to bring effectively Roshana up to speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter Northern California. So just like that, in line with the Slack conversation, Roshana can be brought up to speed. 
But what Greg really wants is he wants Roshana to take this analysis and overlay it with candidate information. And so the way she's going to do that is directly in line with the Slack conversation. She's going to go ahead and click on the analysis, and that'll take her to the Oracle Analytic Cloud in context with the conversation already loaded. And she can start sort of picking or adding candidate or recruit information. And to do that, she's going to go ahead here and click on this Add Data Source icon. She's going to add a data set. Now, a lot of people assume that because we're Oracle, we only connect to Oracle data sources, but that actually couldn't be further from the truth. The truth is we actually connect to over 40 data sources today that keeps changing every quarter. Um, and the large majority are actually not even Oracle related like Redshift, Dropbox, DB2. But for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna pick the Oracle Talent Cloud or Taleo Talent Cloud backlog information about candidates we've interviewed but haven't hired yet. And just here, directly in line with my conversation, uh, with my analysis now, I've got this information available. First thing I'd like to do is maybe just bring in a simple list of candidates, just names and where they're from and maybe their titles. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the job title, zip code, um, their name and their interview score. And I'm gonna go ahead here and just add a table. And right here, you can see in line with my analysis now, I've, I've taken information from Taleo Cloud, overlaid it with some financial or mashed it up with some financial information. But what would be really cool is if I could take this analysis here or this data and plot it on this map to see exactly where I have skilled resources near Pleasanton, which is here, by the way. So to do that, I'm actually gonna create a new layer on this map. And I'm gonna sort of pick latitude, longitude, and you can see all the candidates that I had that I've interviewed and that's already part of my system. I'm gonna go ahead and color those by job titles. So right here you can see by job title the candidates that are near Pleasanton. What's interesting is that the system can actually uh, relate the information between the two visualizations or between all the visualizations, frankly. So for example, if I click on dermatologist here, you see that it highlighted this point over here. For a store like Pleasanton, we would need a cosmetologist. Um, I can also do the, uh, the reverse, right? So I could click over here and see that this associate is, uh, you know, Timothy Barker, or even click in a dense area where it'll sort of multi-select a couple of individuals. So that's pretty cool, but right now I'm looking at my entire candidate pool, regardless of job title. I'd like to filter that down a little bit by creating a filter up here and filter specifically for cosmetologists and some associates, uh, senior cosmetologists if available, and maybe store managers as well. And then just like that now, I've got my analysis constrained specifically for the job roles that I need here in Pleasanton. And we see that we're in good shape here in terms of store managers. There's a couple of available nearby. We've got an associate here and here, which isn't too far, so that's good. But there is a problem in the sense that we've, the closest cosmetologist is way over here in Lafayette, and for those of you who know the Bay Area, this might look close as, uh, as, the, crow fly, as the crow flies, but you're looking at an hour commute here. And you've got sort of other candidate over here, and this is a, you know, the commute from hell, so nobody would want to take the job in Pleasanton. So anyway, so that's great. So now we've got candidate information overlaid on top of our sort of uh, hotspots for new stores. Um, but Roshana's kind of identified that Greg's in a pickle because he doesn't have any nearby candidates or um, cosmetologists. So all she has to do now is click on share, share back to Slack. She can type a message to Greg saying, hey, this is great. We've got a, you know, a list of candidates that are potential as far as store managers are concerned and so forth, but you know, we don't have any cosmetologists nearby. So she's gonna go ahead and post that to Slack. Let me go back to Slack here, show you what that might look like. And just like that, in line with the conversation, she can go back to Slack, share her insights with Greg, <clears throat> and then he can deal with the problem of hiring a new cosmetologist. So to wrap up what I've shown, I've really shown how the Oracle Digital Assistant can take a tool, a great tool like Slack, and extend it to be even cooler with the sort of capabilities in this instance of the Oracle Analytic Cloud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Great.
So I think the other part which we see after uh, you want to, once you have all these reports or data you have created an analysis on, you want to be able to publish and engage users, publish this content and be able to engage users. You again face a lot of challenges today. If you talk to any developer, one, there's a proliferation of different channels and ways you want to interact with. There are websites, no doubt, there are apps, uh, multiple mobile apps, of course, and different formats, and then chatbots and other technologies in, in terms of how you would interact with your users. Very complex, very hard to maintain, and very hard to build in many times, and you have to build it many times and deploy it in many ways as well. So it gets very, very costly and uh, difficult. Uh, keeping the content up to date in multiple channels, of course, it becomes very tricky as well. Uh, and then optimizing the experiences on these different channels and different ways the users will interact and how you share uh, uh, information as well. So how do you make the right decisions? How do you provide the right data and share that is a big challenging task as well. So what we have done with our cloud platform uh, is we build out a whole content experience uh, stack uh, which allows you to have an API first uh, centralized content hub where all the content associated with your applications and the data you want to share is available through the centralized repository. Uh, but it's federated in terms of how, where the content re resides, and you use an API to go and get the data together and create your experiences and deliver that uh, through different channels very easily and quickly. So you can deliver the content to any channel, uh, you can, uh, in, in a matter of hours, and then you can easily have a quick and easy way to uh, do consistent user experience for those uh, channel interfaces as well. So it's a full set of capabilities been built out. And to kind of show you how uh, this would work, it's like let, let, we'll walk you through how to accelerate the job posting for this use case, how you identify the best candidates, Im improve the interview process and automate the scheduling, and then do, do the employee onboarding. For that, I'll have Chris Stone come on stage and showcase uh, some of these capabilities. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Amit. Thank you. Yeah. Morning, everyone. So let's pick up where uh, Greg left off, um, where he's he said, let's get started and start looking for a cosmetologist. So he asked the digital assistant to create a posting. And so the digital assistant goes into the content service or into the content and experience service and looks for existing postings in order to help us build this, uh, this particular service. So let's go right into it. And what you see here is a new innovation from Oracle where we've married the uh, uh, natural language processing in the content creator, or what we call a smart content creator, with everything on the right-hand side you see here, which would be assets in the repository, images, videos, documents, anything you can think of. Um, and so think of this as natural language processing or having fun with word vector math, uh, with a bunch of machine learning uh, models underneath, where it's for the first time combining these two things together. So as I type, it's recognizing what I'm typing and bringing up the images. So, I don't want to cast my net for the entire United States to create this job description. What I really want to do is narrow it down to Pleasanton. So I'm going to choose Pleasanton, and as you can see, the images on the right-hand side all changed. And they changed based on the relevance of what I just selected. So as I look through this document, I realize, and you heard Jacques mention it earlier, that you know, the traffic really does suck in the Bay Area, so we really have to do something about this. So I want to narrow my search even further. So I want to hire somebody that's actually within 20 miles of this Pleasanton location. Um, so, and then you can see the images on the right-hand side change again, so that's great. So I also want to dress this up a bit, so I'm going to take one of these images and drop it, and everything wraps around it. So now I'm happy. I, I think I've got the right job description to go recruit the right person for this job. Um, the next thing I want to do is submit this for review. I'm not the manager. I can't make the decision on this final job description that has to go out and be approved. So I say, yep, let's go set off a workflow to make that happen. And you can see up here in the upper left, approved has happened behind the scenes. So now I'm ready to publish this. And I can pick a few of the channels that I want to publish it on. Here are the four that I have pre-selected. I say publish, and behind the scenes, it's now been published. So now what I want to do is go back into Slack and Greg wants to check and see how we're doing. So we can see here now, we don't need that. <laughs> we can see here now that Greg has uh, seen that these have been posted on LinkedIn and a few other environments. And he's also asked to see over time, how am I doing? So 182 applicants have applied for this job. Here are the variety of channels they've come through. And he decides, okay, let's start the interview process. So time passes. Uh, and they narrow this down to 10 candidates, and they start the process 
of interviewing. So let's switch over now to our mobile device and begin the conversation with uh, Alicia. Alicia is one of the candidates. So Alicia sees, you can see here uh, that we reviewed her application and we're gonna start the interview process. She doesn't need to download anything. This, this communication is happening with a digital assistant and that digital assistant is going to schedule an interview for her. So Alicia click, clicks on show me the available times. The one she likes is 10 a.m., that sounds good. The assistant comes back and says, that's great. Here's the number we have that we pulled out of the uh, application you sent in for you. Is this good? Yep, that looks great. Then it wants to set a reminder, because I guess cosmetologists can't remember much. So she has a reminder set for her to come in for an interview. There you go. I'll send you a reminder when that happens. So. Time has passed again. Guess what, Alicia has won the job. She is being hired. Let's start the onboarding process for Alicia. So what we see here is Rare Cosmetics is now gonna begin that particular process. First thing she needs to do though is download the Rare application on her phone, a little information about an after party, a gala, et cetera. I guess cosmetologists like to party a lot. But I'm gonna pick onboarding uh, as my next option. Hello, Alicia. We're setting up an account for you. As you can see here, let's get started. She clicks on let's get started and it asks her, first of all, to confirm that that's her email address. That's what it's set up for her. Now she needs to set up a password. Alicia types in her password and it's time to set up her security badge. All of this being done through the digital assistant. She decides she wants to take a new picture rather than something from the repository. She says okay, gets permission from her iPhone to do so, smile, take a picture, and she's ready to go to get her badge. So she's almost done. It first confirms that this is her address. All the information about her is correct. She says, yep, that's correct, I'm good. Then there's one last thing. Uh, the company issues uh, uh, tablets for each of its new employees. And so she gets to pick the color to be shipped to her house. So she chooses space gray. I don't know why it's called space gray, we all know space is beige, but maybe someday Apple will make, you know, cosmic latte as a color. Anyway, let's, let's move on. She decides to pick space gray. There you have it. And she has now <clears throat> been welcomed as the new employee and, and as a new cosmetologist. There you have it. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. That was great. So you saw how users and uh, people will interact with all the applications you build on a platform. Now let's talk about how you would build those applications and what are the tools available to be able to build and deliver those applications as well. So today, if you want to build applications, there are a lot of challenges, of course. I mean, if you talk to developers today, they have multiple language requirements. They want the stack and frameworks which they want to choose for their applications to be available in the stack they choose. Uh, they want to be able to, of course, ex expose a lot of the applications they're building through different channels as well as we were talking about earlier. And then the whole lifecycle management, the whole automation of building, monitoring, and as well as the lifecycle for those applications you build, as well as the platform you're running on, is very difficult today. Uh, each, each provider provides different tools. There are definitely no consistency in terms of how you deliver and deploy those things. And the API lifecycle management is very, very cumbersome. Uh, and the whole orchestration and deployment is very difficult as well. So for that, what we've been doing around the application development portfolio we have is one to provide a full integrated CI CD tools through a developer pipeline. Uh, so it becomes very easy for developers to collaborate and uh, work together between different parts of their application and then deploy those applications. As well as we provide a full governance as well as API lifecycle management, be it in sort of testing, documenting, uh, publishing the APIs, uh, as well as managing the version control of it, as well as the, and the security associated with the APIs as well. And then the whole automation of patching, upgrades, backup, and recovery. So as a developer, you can focus on building your applications instead of worrying, up, worrying about the underlying infrastructure or the platform for running those applications on. And then make sure that there is monitoring and pre, pre, uh, alerting so that you know what could go wrong so you can fix those things as well. Beyond that, as part of the application platform, we've been adding also a lot of new capabilities around data science. We recently acquired a company called datascience.com, which is one of the leaders in this space today. And what they provide is a collaborative, integrated, enterprise-grade data science platform. 
which allows uh, anybody, a data scientist especially, but anybody else who wants to be able to build and train models, version control them, uh, be able to deploy them, as well as monitor those models, and supporting for multiple frameworks, other open source uh, tools out there, as well as different notebooks. This all runs on top of our Oracle Cloud infrastructure, taking advantages of uh, work we're doing with NVIDIA on the GPU side, so we can accelerate a lot of the deployment and the performance associated with that as well. Uh, so to show this to you, I'll invite Mike Lehman uh, to stage, give, give you an idea of what would, it, what would it take for a data scientist to identify the best candidates and how would you go about uh, running the data science tools. Welcome, Great. Mike. Thanks, Amit. All right, let's see. So this. what I'm going to do is uh, take you through, you saw earlier on that uh, Greg was on Slack and he got the top 10 candidates uh, pulled out uh, magically in the list. Oh, here's top 10. How did we do that? We actually used AI and ML to power a set of algorithms to choose those candidates. And we did that with a data scientist team inside of our data science platform here. What you're looking at is the project workbench that the data scientists and the domain experts in HR use to develop that. You can see a number of uh, projects that I have going on here, scoring, employee turnover, workforce uh, uh, forecasting. What I'll do is I'll take you into the scoring job candidates uh, project here. This is where my data scientist, my HR person, as well as actually an application developer that incorporated that machine learning into that Slack conversation collaborated. You can see the activity stream here. And what I'll do is I'll show you what a typical life cycle looks like for that data scientist. I'll launch a session here. And here, what I'm bringing together is uh, some version control on the top. We've got a branch inside of a GitHub uh, repository. I'm going to choose some compute to associate to this uh, session. You can see that I'm using a notebook called Jupyter. This is where I can do my Python programming as a data scientist. And then I'm going to associate it with some uh, environments. This is where I have tools like TensorFlow or H2O AI, or in this particular case, I'm going to use Scikit-Learn to actually uh, train the algorithm. And then I click on launch. And what's happening behind the scenes here is I'm connecting up the CPU capacity, the workbook uh, infrastructure, as well as the algorithms. And when I open up the session here, what I see is the notebooks that I'm going to be doing my data science work inside of. And if you can see here, I have a number of uh, Python libraries, some things like NumPy and uh, Matplotlib, as well as Spacey for parsing algorithms. If I roll down here, what the data scientist was doing was uh, parsing some data from the Indeed and LinkedIn algorithms uh, backend data. Um, I can roll down a little bit more. I can parse an, uh, a resume within here. Uh, and then if I roll down just a little bit further, you can see I can start using some of the graphical tools in Python to build out some graphs that might help my HR staff understand what's going on here. It's looking here at the um, features that I'm interested in from these uh, uh, employees that I'm going to be, or uh, candidates I'm looking at. And finally, I can also score them and see who are the most productive and so forth. So I can bring back that top 10 list of candidates that I want to interview. Now, when I click on sync changes up here, what happens, had I been actually doing some development work in here, is it actually syncs back the changes into, in this particular case, GitHub. So everything is version controlled. So I have auditability around it, traceability. I can roll back if I don't like the changes that I've done and so forth. So let's sync these changes out there. And now once I've done that, I've got a model that I is going to produce out a good set of predictions out the other side. What I might want to do is turn it over to my development team. Often this can be really hard in real life. You hand it off and they don't know how to deal with a model. What I'm going to do here is show you how easy it is inside of the data science platform. First thing I'll do is go out and invite my application developer, Ruslana, uh, here. I'll click on her and add her to the project. So now she can come in and start working with the artifacts of that project. And to make it really easy for her, what I'm going to do is go to the outputs area here, and I can publish out a REST endpoint so she can incorporate it into that Slack application. So I'll go out here, and you can see here that I have a sort of a workbench. This API has already been published, but I can go out and run this API in this environment and bring back in a little testing harness who are the top 10 candidates um, for that. Now, for Ruslana, this is super easy. It's a REST endpoint. She can plug it into any uh, application. In fact, we give a little wrapper, a Python wrapper, as well as a node wrapper. And just like before, you'll notice over here on the left-hand side, these APIs are completely version controlled as well. So if I don't like what the model's producing, I can roll back the, uh, to earlier versions. So I have the whole uh, idea of auditability and traceability and version, versioning and governance over the entire uh, environment here. 
So literally in a, in a few seconds here, what you saw was how I can have a team of data scientists, domain experts like HR folks, as well as application developers collaborate on building models and training models and ultimately deploying models. I can plug it into um, applications like Slack or any custom bespoke application, and I can use all those standard open source toolkits like H2O AI and uh, TensorFlow as well as Scikit-Learn. So I hope you got a good sense of what the product looks like. Thank you. Very nice. So our, our goal with that, of course, is to make it very embed AI and ML into all of our development tools as well. So this makes it very, very easy to do that. And uh, the, sec the sec things we see after that when developers build applications and uh, they want to be able to integrate with the existing infrastructure as well as integra integrate with the existing applications they might have. The issue you have today, of course, is your SaaS applications, on-premise applications are very decoupled. Uh, there's no common way to kind of build and bridge the gap between the data flow associated with that. The whole process automation is very broken when you're doing human workflow, document workflow, or system workflow. How easily you can bring those things together becomes very, very complicated today. Uh, and then for data analysts, uh, be able to get data from various data sources. You have a lot of legacy databases. You have a lot of uh, cloud databases. You have systems which are running, structured and structured data. How do you bring those together as well? Uh, so to make it easier, uh, integration cloud, uh, what we have done is create a unified platform uh, which doesn't require any kind of coding. You don't have to be a professional developer to be able to connect your on-premise application with your SaaS application, be it both Oracle and non-Oracle. Uh, added a lot of capabilities around uh, easily investigating and getting those applications to be seen in your portfolio as well. So 100 plus different adapters to Salesforce.com, to Microsoft, to eBusiness Suite, uh, uh, PeopleSoft other applications you might be using, including our Oracle SaaS applications as well. And then we do a lot of pre-built integration. So when you start using this application, uh, these tools, you don't again have to do a lot of coding or any kind of discovery yourself. Uh, Built-in intelligence, so when you're doing your workflow or orchestration, it can give you the idea in terms of what is the best action, uh, next action, uh, and guide you through that whole process. And then have adaptive case management, so that again, the workflow becomes much more simple and easy to kind of execute on. And then it gets hybrid and heterogeneous, so you can deploy it anywhere, running both on a public cloud as well as running it on-prem, and connect any kind of data as well as any app. So uh, once you build and integrate those applications, what we're seeing is a need for adding a lot of new generation experiences on top of that. You've been hearing about chatbots for the last few years. That is evolving very quickly to digital assistant, which is really taking different chatbots and connecting them together based on the roles you might have inside your enterprise. So he knows who you are, what kind of information you need, and proactively pushing that information to you uh, as a user from these various different data sources and different systems. And that, I think, makes it a big difference versus, going, uh, versus what you would do with chatbot. This idea of digital assistant is really now one bot in a way across all the different assets you might have. To make it real, I'll have Suhas Ulier come and show you how you would automate interview scheduling. We showed you some of the examples and how you would do employee onboarding and how you build those applications very quickly. Welcome, Suhas. Hi. Thank you, Amit. Good morning, everyone. So you saw several demos this morning uh, where both Chris and Jacques, uh, with their personas, interacted with the digital assistant to get data from the back-end systems. So I have two parts. And by the way, I promised Chris that I'll do his cosmic latte next year with the digital assistant. We'll see interesting how that looks. But um, you know, for, I have two parts in my demo. One is building the skills, which are the individual chatbots that's integrated with the digital assistant. And the second part is, of course, wiring this into all these different backend systems that we have, right? So there's two parts of my demo. So let's get started. So on the screen, um, you see, so there are four parts to actually building a skill. Let's think about the skill as a chatbot and your multiple skills. And then you have the digital assistant as the one point that everyone interacts with, right? So, Greg, the uh, manager, interacted using Slack, and when you know, he wouldn't care less where he was integrating with, the digital assistant took care of all of that. So there are four parts. One is defining the dialogue. You saw the back and forth that happened between the bot and the user. So I'm going to pick up from there, and what you see on the screen is the dialogue flow, the conversational UI, for the Alicia flow where she was scheduling an interview. So I already cre pre-created one, but I want to show you how easy it is to basically go and create and change things. So here. You know, um, I'm going to change the bot, and I'm going to ask sort of what is the bot message when she says, okay, yes, she wants to have a reminder, the different options, yes and no, and, and done, and pretty much that sort of defines the flow, right? So this is a flow for the non-technical person, the business user, or the person designing the conversational UI 
to very quickly go and uh, mock up or prototype this dialog. Once that's done, I can now go and generate out the flow. Let's click on generate. And what it does behind the scenes is it creates all the artifacts required by the AI engine to basically train or create the model. So first, it creates what we call intents. Uh, on the left is sort of the intent, which is the scheduled interview. The sort of um, utterances or the phrases that's used by the end user or could be used by the end user. So automatically generate some of these phrases for the model to train. And I'm not going to click on the train right now, but when I do that, we have an ensemble of natural language alg processing algorithms that basically trains the model, right? So once I'm done that, now this is a very simple flow, but if I wanted to modify that flow, uh, I can now hand this over to a developer where they can basically create all the different nuances of that flow from that point. As, the, as a business user, I'm just going to create sort of my normal flow, but here I may have exceptions. I may have to have different types of catch-all situations. So here's I can go in and make those modifications. So that's the second part of, uh, so first is creating the dialogue, second is training the AI engine. Now I've done that, I want to integrate this to the different channels. So I'm going to go and click on the channels. Um, and I'm going to go and select a number of out-of-the-box channels. Now we provide this abstraction to create and integrate with a number of these different channels. I'm going to pick Twilio here for SMS. And I'm going to enter sort of some of the information like the account ID, the phone number uh, for SMS. And I'm going to hit create. And now I've integrated with the Twilio channel. So I have the front end integration done. I've done the AI implementation done, the dialogue done. And the last part now is to integrate this with uh, data. So I'm going to go to my integration channel. And uh, now this is tightly integrated with our integration cloud service, which is uh, and, and, and through integration recipes, right? So, th so here I'm doing an onboarding example. So I'm going to click on onboarding. So I click on onboarding. And what we do is internally, the way we've integrated with the integration cloud is that basically it exposes the interfaces where I can take all the JSON properties and make them visible here to sort of um, manage that, right? So this is how, how we would go about building the skill and tying that to the digital assistant. Um, and now moving to the second part of my demo, I'm going to move to the integration cloud. Um, and in the integration cloud, you managed to make it here today? <laughs> I did. It was a late night. So this is what happens, right? <laughs> you know, we made integration so easy. Even I could do it. <laughs> you want me to do it or you want to do it? No, I don't trust you. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, all right. Thank you, Sohas. So my name is Vikas Anand, and I only do integration. Um, so we have integration cloud right here, and Amit has done a very eloquent job of describing what it does. I'll actually show you how it works. Um, here, we are going to focus on the task of getting Alicia her, was it the uh, Space Gray iPad, I think? I'm sure a lot of you are actually looking up for if the Galaxy is beige, but that's for later. So here, for example, uh, for enabling Alicia to get that iPad, it's about a process around employee onboarding. And you need to connect to provisioning systems which fulfill the requirement for getting her the iPad. So I can simply go in and use a, a number of recipes which are available in the integration cloud through the marketplace. I pick up one which says for employee onboarding. It has a pretty sophisticated employee onboarding orchestration which is designed to really onboard the employee and get her her iPad. It connects to the HCM cloud where I can retrieve the employee information. I can map it to the roles for the employee, and then I can actually go back to the fulfillment system to provision the iPad. Now, there's a new twist over here. This company also added another fulfillment system, and this happens to be a legacy. So at this open world, what we are announcing is the availability of the Oracle integration RPA adapter, which lets you connect to robotic process automation bots. So here, I have a number of adapters available. We also have added an RPA connector, which lets you discover bots which are hosted on different environments. And these bots are really doing actions. So I can discover the bot, which is, in this case, running close to a legacy you know, AS400 application. I can see the actions which are available. And then I can enable this to place an order for the iPad. Once I've done, I can actually activate the integration quickly, and then I can monitor how it's executing. So the integration cloud is really a very comprehensive platform to integrate SaaS on-premise applications, as well as bots, which enable you to go back to your legacy systems, as well as automate the end-to-end -end process. So Amit, that's all I wanted to talk about integration. Great, so easy. 
It is really easy. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Hey, Amit, uh, there's a little twist. OK, you always have some twists. I never know. This is a great audience. Sure. I think it's a moment for a selfie. Oh. <laughs> and once I enable this uh, phone at the back end, it'll actually post it on LinkedIn using our integration cloud. Oh, wow. All right. Are you guys my, up? My 15 year old will be very impressed. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> are, are you guys up for it? Yeah? Thumbs up? <laughs> All right, let's do this. All right. OK. Everyone, thumbs up. How do you turn this back? <laughs> All right. Now you know I don't take selfies so often. <laughs> I, it's no point saying cheese, right? No, it's OK. <laughs> All right, we got that. All thank right, you thank so you. much. You're a great audience. Thanks, Vikas. So you saw how easy, of course, to do some of this integration is. But I think there are no systems are complete nowadays, of course, without having good security and easy way to manage them, right? Uh, there's a lot of sophisticated uh, folks out there who are doing attacking your systems out there. There's a lot of well-funded resources for them. They want to get to your data. Uh, the number of devices, a lot, a lot of the systems uh, which are well-connected well can be easily hacked into. Uh, and there's a lot of different threat landscape uh, evolving. So what we have done uh, in our platform is to really make sure that security is right in the middle of everything. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, built into the applications, it's built into our platform, not a bolt-on, really. Uh, unified data platform where we can collect all the actions, understand what's going on using AI ML, predict issues, as well as remediate in automated fashion. And make sure that it's kind of connecting and uh, protecting all your systems, not just uh, the applications you run on Oracle, but also other third-party clouds. We have integration into everything out there to make sure you have an end-to-end -end, uh, security for your applications as well. To show, uh, show you uh, the last part of a demo is the how you remediate uh, a lot of the security violation. I'll have Darren Coleman come on stage and uh, showcase that. Thanks, everybody. Welcome, Darren. So guys, so our story picks up a few weeks after Alicia has been with the company. Um, as part of the onboarding process, she's been given access to various applications that she needs to do her job. We're using the Oracle Public Cloud for a single sign-on for seamless access to the applications. And today's the magic day when she gets her corporate American Express card in the mail, and she decides it's going to be a good idea to take a picture and upload it to the company file sharing site, which hopefully you guys realize is not a good idea. Spoiler alert. Um, so let's. Within the application, the file sharing application, we're going to take a photo, give access to the camera, and take a quick picture. And what we're going to see is that a security alert was triggered. The file has been quarantined due to a violation of company policy. And within the application, we actually see that Amex card has been quarantined. So now let's switch over to the view of the security administrator. And Rare is using the Oracle CASB service to monitor and secure their various cloud applications. From the dashboard view, we're able to see that um, there are various policy alerts and non-compliant security controls. And what we're going to do is drill down into these tw 12 high-risk alerts. And what we see here is just now, an alert was triggered by Alicia in the Skybox application, which is the file sharing service that they use. And if we drill down further, we see that specifically a policy for credit card holder data was triggered. This is due to her uploading sensitive credit card information. And the action that the CASB service has taken was to quarantine the file, effectively removing access to the file by Alicia or anyone else that has access to the file sharing service. And if we drill down and see how Alicia's been doing over the last several weeks that she's been with the company, we see that her behavior has been relatively innocuous, nothing really to trigger any specific alerts except for this huge spike that we see here today where she uploaded the credit card. What, we, what we'll see is that the CASB service, in addition to having quarantined the file, it's taken a couple of other actions that Alicia's going to have to follow due to this new heightened security controls. So let's jump back to Alicia. We're going to pick up. She's going to try to access her corporate interest, intranet site, the rare site. We're going to enter her username and password. And we're going to sign into the application. And we see that there's an alert that's been triggered. A one-time passcode has been sent to the phone. This is something I think that's common to many of us. Perhaps we're trying to access a, um, a website from a new location, from an unrecognized device for the first time. In Alicia's case, this additional action is being triggered by the CASB service that has her under this heightened security alert. So we'll go ahead, we'll enter that verification code, and we see we have full access. And what we'll witness is, over time, as her security posture starts to normalize again, this additional verification step will no longer be needed. 
So what we were able to show is how we can use the Oracle Cloud to monitor and secure these various cloud applications and infrastructure as a service and protect against harmful actions, even in the case of Alicia, where these actions were unintentional un and they were not malicious. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Thanks. So you saw all the things we are capable of from the platform perspective. I do want to invite Varuj from LA Unified School District uh, to share with you what they're going through while they're building out their applications and their requirements as well. Welcome, Varuj. Thank you for taking the time to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, tell us what are the things you guys are going through? What are the requirements you're solving for today? Well, we have the second largest school district in the country. We have um, over uh, 800 schools, and over 900,000 uh, uh, students and parents. Uh, to, to, that we serve to, um, and we have, uh, you can imagine the challenge of uh, keeping information sure, sure. Uh, aware for them. So what, what, do, what do you guys build? What are the th things you guys are adopting right now to make this ha happen and uh, deliver to your users? Um, so we, uh, we had fragmented sites um, uh, within the district, so we decided to create a, um, a mobile um, app, um, a one-stop shop for parents to be able to come in and get information about their uh, children and uh, for their schools, and then we had six months to do this. Okay. And what, uh, what was the results? How, how, how was the users reacting to the solutions you guys have built? So uh, we, we were able to deploy uh, within six months the application, and uh, we were able to do it. Um, uh, if had we not done it on the cloud, it would have probably taken four times longer and uh, more expensive, and uh, now we have a mobile app uh, that parents can uh, get information and, and be aware of their children's uh, um, grades and assignments and, uh, and, uh, and attendance, and then that will increase the uh, parent participation, sure, sure. And, which is our end goal. Great, a little peace of mind for the parents, I guess. Exactly. Great, thank you. Thank you for thank coming, you. and look forward to hearing more about your successes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So uh, beyond uh, the, you heard from LA Unified School District from Baruch, there are other customers globally who are using our platform today. So we're pretty excited about where we are to, uh, in terms of adoption. Uh, and uh, if, uh, what we've been doing is really making sure that we have a technical, technically unified and proven cloud offering based on open standards. You saw some of the things investment-wise we're making from the open standard perspective, making sure we're investing in the innovation, a lot of new areas of uh, capabilities we're adding to our platform as well making sure it's, of course, highly performant, scalable, and available, running on the Oracle Cloud infrastructure, uh, providing low cost of ownership, uh, with comprehensive security built into our platform for governance and compliance as well. And then any workload you have from Oracle, we're providing tools to easily migrate them to the cloud if you choose to whenever you're ready for that uh, journey as well. If you want to hear more about uh, some of these uh, services we have delivered, uh, please make sure you attend uh, the demo ground to see them, as well as you can try it out for free. Go to cloud.oracle.com slash try it. You have free trials available for 30 days to try any of the services I spoke about. Everything we showed you is available today in our platform, so you can use it. And you can, of course, attend other sessions to hear from your peers. There are a couple of a few sessions which might be of interest to you. So if you, if you want to hear more about some of the things you saw today, again, there will be a lot of other uh, presentations throughout the week. So thank you all for coming. Uh, have a great uh, rest of the week. Look forward to seeing many of you during the week as well. Have a great day. Thank you.